Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So, this is our last day in Bangkok, and everybody has been saying, Dave, you've got to get over to Chris Shannon's house and see his phenomenal collection. And I just walked in this door, and it is absolutely phenomenal. Also, Chris is the only person, the first person, that I have ever done a video on that is actually taller than me. Wow. So. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to slouch with Chris. All right, so Chris is going to give us a tour of his just incredible collection here in Bangkok. Absolutely. All right, good. I think I think I nailed it in one take. That was just awesome. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation, and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. What we're gonna do first before the light goes away is we're gonna take a look at some of my king cobras and a forest cobra in this big reticulate. All right, so we're heading into the cobra room here. That's Oracle right there. That's Oracle. That is the famous Oracle. Hi, buddy. That's the orange mangrove king. Oh, look at that. So and how, how old is this? Uh, this one's about three or four years old. Three or four years old. They don't get as big as like the mainland ones. Well, right. they, they are mainland, but they live in the mangrove strictly. Gotcha. This one's some like fisherman caught it and sold it on the fish market. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was like the fourth female in captivity. We have no males. Wow. So like we can't continue their bloodline at all. Oh, right? that's a bummer. Here to, like, study for now. Sure. The one in here okay. is my most defensive king. A northwestern Thai, a Thak locality. She's very dark, and she has like pitch black eyes. Wow. I've never seen that from any king. So also with me is uh, Dan Maleri from DM Exotics, and Jeff LeClaire, and Apple is here, and Laura is here. All right, so which king are we taking out to play with here? Up to you. Should we take out Oracle? A big king, small king, how many kings? A big king. <laughs> right, I guess we'll take him out. So now, this is a fully loaded King Cobra. King Venom Cobra. Line, or or Deepang. What wow. I do is like, I try to get them out on their own. There's a lot of new people here today. He's not used to people. But he's overall a very calm king. Let's see your technique here. Oh, yeah. Wow. How old is Oracle? He's about 18 years old. That's what they estimated. Wow. They gave them like a scale sample. He is beautiful. All right, let's take him wow, out. we're taking him out. All right. Someone's got to open that door. Easy, Oracle. Wow. Wow, he is just a honey. Now, have you ever had any close calls with him, or? Never. never. He's, he was like in captivity with humans for about seven years before I got him. And by then, he used to be a shell snake until he like got tired of people. Yeah. He just lounges around all day. Barely hoods up. Wow. Like he's never been really defensive. He's never struck or charged anyone. Anymore, anyone. So he's been around people all his life. Yeah. When he was, oh, I don't remember, I think like seven years old or so, that's when they found him trapped under a fence down south in Kirby. Uh, he's like probably my most docile king. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Extremely calm, very curious, never hurts. These snakes are so smart. He's actually standing up for one. Normally he just like just flops down. Right, he just kind of flops? Wow. All right, so what are you feeding Oracle? Oh, he's eating uh, two rat snakes a week, maybe like a chunk of Burmese python or reticulated python. Like a lot of people offer me frozen thought snakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get them at like the snake farm. Sometimes I get like BOR, like the snakes run over sure. the roads. If they're fresh, I like bottle them up or bag them and put them in my fridge. Wow, their scales are so smooth. 
so old. There's like some little growths coming out of it. Yeah. Oh, such a beautiful snake. So Rattlers, I'm taking it that a lot of you guys have never had an opportunity to pet a huge king cobra like this. And, you know, I don't recommend it. You know, if, if Chris wasn't here, I probably wouldn't be crouched close enough to this snake to be petting him because I don't know this snake, but Chris does. Chris, you know, recognizes his body language, recognizes what this snake is going to do. But yeah, this snake feels like satin and Man, this is just such an incredible experience to be here and actually be petting a fully loaded, fully lethal King Cobra. Okay, so now we're going to take, what's, what's this one's name? Grace. Grace, okay, so we're going to take Grace out here. A mangrove King. She should be able to skip. Now it's not like spring yet, so the super orange coloration isn't going to show that much. However, you can easily notice it. And Apple just ran right out of the room. <laughs> Whoa! Hello, Grace. God, she is looking just right at me. She chased me for about 10 feet two months ago. Now she's even bigger. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. She's kind of surly, isn't she? Whoa! All right. Wow. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy crap. Now that's a cobra. Now, like a lot of cobras, sometimes you'll see, well not sometimes, all the time you'll see like big charmers try to pat them on the right. back and kiss them. But she's too aware for any of that. If I attempted that, she would bite me. Hey, uh, you, you don't, you, you don't, you don't need to come any closer to my you know, sandals here, sweetheart. She's like lightning, I bet. Whoa! This is a geographic variation of the King Cobra. Explain to us the difference in coloration. This one was found from the west in the Andaman Ocean, and a fisherman actually fished her out in a net. So I don't, I'm not too sure how far out he was. He was catching all sorts of fish, and then he put this one onto like the fish market. And one of my friends keeps like a lot of sea snakes and he does a lot of fish research so he walks around those markets a lot. And then he came across her when she was bright orange. Wow. And he was like, whoa, I have one just like it. Because he's been keeping a mangrove king, well two actually, two females, for three or four years now. And then all of a sudden another one appears, but another female. But her favorite uh, snakes to eat are like the anhydrous anhydrous or anything of the anhydrous family, the water snakes. Yep, yep. She would go after like the mangrove cat snakes, the green cat snakes. Wow. So now you've had the snake for a year now. Yep, about a year. And how comfortable are you with, um, <laughs> I try with not to, yeah, with... Not to mess with her at all. Because really you don't know this snake yet. Not at all. I mean, I've had... Like the other snake I talked to you about, the one with the black eyes, I've had her since she was four days old. I actually like hatched him out of the egg. Right. I hatched her. And since day one, she's been a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to this day, she hates everything and everyone. So now I know that the venom uh, potency of king cobras it's is very, different yeah. based on where they're from in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So. The northern ones are more Exactly, so this one isn't as toxic as a northern, but yeah, but you know when it, can, when it comes time to being bit by a, a king cobra, you know, it really doesn't matter at that point, you know, the, the how toxic they are. Those are probably my favorite. They get only eight feet long, 
rarely 12 feet, yeah. and they're fully arboreal, and there's no anti-venom that works for them. Yikes. I don't remember how many deaths, but it was over 100 per year from them. Wow. All right, well, let's not make it 101. Oh, Rattlers, I'm telling you, playing with fully loaded, fully lethal adult King Cobras like that is enough to get my heart pounding, but Chris has a whole nother room full of Vipers right over here. All right, look at this room. So Chris, how many vipers do you have in this room? Probably over 40. Probably over 40. So now these enclosures are kind of unique. Did you, you didn't yeah. make these or did you buy these? these? Are custom made in Thailand. They, they are custom made in Thailand. Yeah. I mean, I would love for them to like export out, but so far none of my friends will like do it. Right. But very nice. Acrylic enclosures keep humidity very well. Absolutely they do. It depends on how you want it to Sure. Go, Sure, and I love how you have all of your enclosures designed as terrariums. Are they bioactive terrariums? Yeah, all of these are bioactive. All of them are bioactive. Some of my tubs are, some aren't. Gotcha. Right here are two baby mambas that I produced. Oh, fantastic. One's in shed, one came out of shed yesterday, but it is getting close to feeding time. They're often super curious. I have a trio of insulators pit vipers along with one baby that I haven't moved yet. All right, so these are the ones from Sumatra. The Komodo ones have like the super blood red eye. And even then, I still have two localities of them. I have one that's orange eyed from a bit west Java, and then two of them are silver eyed. Gotcha. The female and an, another male. When I had just a pair, they wouldn't breed at all. They weren't interested. Gotcha. But when I in introduced another male, they're like, oh, gotta hurry and breed. So now, have you bred these yet? Yeah, we'll get a look at the babies yeah. real soon. But I've been talking to an expert in Indonesia who's been breeding them for like years. And he said he's had like both parents blue and have most of the babies come out green. And at the one year mark, they turn blue. Gotcha. So kind of like the Barons racers where you never know if you're going to get blue ones or green ones. And the green ones are going to change into blue yeah, and exactly. you never really know. All right. So these are what the babies look like here. Wow. See, even one has like a greenish hue on the back. Yeah. That's like turquoise. This is a beautiful pit viper. That is a beautiful pit viper. And where are these from? I actually have two localities. This one's from Nakansi Tamarat. They look completely different to the more common ones in Krabi. Right. The range is quite small. They're just split along the mountain ranges. And then there's another little pocket in Malaysia. Mm hmm So it's hard to pick up those colors in this light. But look at that, it's like a deep purple and green. Just gorgeous. This would be an adult sized specimen. I've never seen bigger in the wild. However, I know they can get bigger than this. This is a black mangrove pit viper. Oh, or a short nice. Pit viper. Nice. Now, this is not a Thai snake, but they are found here, same species, but they look completely different. This one's from West Malaysia, and the ones there are black. A friend of mine got bit by one last year. What happened to him? Well, he went to China to get some natural herb to try and reverse the effects even though it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you can get like albolibris antivenom for that and it'll work. I kept telling him that but he didn't believe me. Uh. So like right now, part of his thumb, I think, or ring finger was melting off. Ah, yikes. So where in Thailand are these found? These snakes are found from southwest all the way to the border of Malaysia and throughout Malaysia. 
that this individual came from West Malaysia, that's where you get them like purplish or full black. The male is pitch black. She's got a lot of nice purple on her. Yeah, she really does. The Thai ones you can find, they have like a more blotchy pattern. They come in browns, silvers. They have like green on the belly or yellow or man, they come in all sorts of colors. Wow. The Indonesian ones are like red bellied or green bellied. Wow, I think I like the black ones yeah, the my best, I think. Are definitely these, they look like dragons. Right. All right, so there's not really a lot of people that keep reptiles in Bangkok. How not big is herpiculture here? The herp culture here, like I, I'm not too crazy. I don't go all about what I do, but I am in some Facebook groups and there's like 20,000 people into these groups, into reptiles. But the venomous hobby in specific, very few, about a thousand people. Gotcha. But as far as people that keep corn snakes yeah, or ball a pythons, lot, a lot of those. there's a lot in Bangkok. So a does Bangkok years. have an expo? Yes. Like a few years ago, I was just about to say that, that I've seen like a few expos being held every year where people would like sell corn snakes and ball pythons and really? like chameleons. Like the panther chameleon market is really starting to blow up. So there are expos around Bangkok. How often do they happen? I think twice a year. I've never been to any <laughs> because uh -huh. like personally, it's not my thing. I know they have like ball pythons, a ton of morphs. The morph market is crazy. Recently though, it's really blowing up. A few years ago, there was only a couple thousand people. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. So Rattlers, unfortunately, that is the end of our time in Thailand. It was such an amazing adventure here. And I want to thank Chris for showing us his collection in this video. And I also want to really thank Dan and Apple Malaria. You know, this is the first time that I've been in the field with them on a trip. And if you guys don't know them in real life, I'll tell you, they are the kindest most generous, most awesome people I've ever had the pleasure of being in the field with. They are just awesome people. And again, as I've said in other videos in this series, uh, if you haven't subscribed to Dan at DM Exotics on YouTube, I'm going to put his link in the description below. I'm really a big fan of his videos, and I'm sure that there's going to be many more herping adventures with Dan and Apple. So anyway, guys, from here, I am back home for a little bit, and then it's off to Australia on another reptile adventure. So hit that subscribe button, and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.